we're back on the riverside at Chris's place to film a very informative video for you with the man himself, the visa legend, starting up businesses here in Laos. What else does this man not do here in Laos? He covers it all. So we're gonna get the information straight from the horse's mouth so that you know exactly what visa you need to get and how to go about it. Whether you're here for travel, you're here to look into buying a place and stay long term, or you're here to even figure out how to retire. We're gonna answer all those questions today. So stay with us. Nice to meet you, Chairs. It's uh, Women's Day today, so um, happy Women's Day to all the women out there. Uh, we wish uh, equality for everybody. Women, men, uh, fans, <laughs> and everything. Everybody. <laughs> all inclusive here. Now. Everybody gets a visa. Mm. <laughs> it's warm, so keeping cool with the beer here, but we got a lot to get into today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit? Maybe I missed something. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so my name is Chris Barth. I've lived in, it's, this is my 17th year in uh, Laos. I am uh, 53 years old. I'm married. I have four kids, two are adopted, uh, two are mine. And I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I have uh, four companies that I run or co run right now. Uh, one is the, my first company was a visa company uh, that I started uh, 12 years ago. Then I have a hotel in Luang Prabang, uh, and I uh, co-run a um, travel company called CK Travel, where we help every people who travel to Laos with all things that concern travel. And finally, we're working on aeronautic uh, services, which means uh, chartering of uh, small aircraft, medium aircraft, and also uh, connectivity in the ASEAN region with uh, bigger aircraft. We're working with different uh, government entities on that. Awesome. As far as the first business, let's let's jump into that because sure. that's all about visas. Yeah. And heck, most of the people watching out there, they don't have a Laos, they don't have a Lao passport, so they're looking into what visas they're going to be able to get, how long they can stay. And I know there's a little bit of confusion. There's a lot of helpful people out there online that'll tell you what you need to get, but there seems to be a little bit of unsurety about exactly what visa you can get as a tourist to start with. So the first rule for every single country in the world, if you're not a citizen of that country, if you're traveling abroad, you need some sort of authorization to stay, which is usually a visa. So for Laos, there are 14 types of visas, uh, and we're just going to talk about the main ones. So, um, some countries from ASEAN, those are the countries of the region, like uh, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, there's um, several countries. They are so-called visa exempt, exempt. So they don't have to pay for a visa fee because there's no visa and they get to stay a certain amount of time, 14 or 30 days, it's 30 days actually in the country, before they ex need to exit the country or get a proper uh, visa. Then you have uh, tourist visas. So uh, there's a lot of countries, um, most of you guys looking at this are from Western countries. So uh, the Americas, Oceania, Australia, Europe. Um, so it's very easy to come and travel as a, as a tourist in Laos, there's a tourist visa called the TB3 and you get visa and arrival so you don't have to go online or go to the embassy and get a visa you just arrive with your passport you go to the visa and arrival window you pay $40 for 30 days and you get a nice little sticker on your passport that gives you 30 days and the cool thing about this visa is you can renew it twice uh, in the country at uh, any immigration uh, center. There's probably a dozen of them in most uh, provinces. There's 18 provinces in Laos. So there's one in Luang Prabang, there's in Vien Sian, Vang Vieng, Pak Se, where uh, most people uh, travel in Lao PDR. So you can renew it twice, 30 days, so you get 90 days. Um, and the renewal fee is, uh, it's about 30 bucks. So uh, that's how it works. That's super convenient. See, yeah. I didn't know that until recently, almost a year here until I knew that. And a lot of people would always tell me, oh, you gotta go back across the border. 
to renew it and i think a lot of people do they end up you know changing their plans yeah, and that's true that's they, or true they leave loud because yeah. they don't even know they can be here yeah. 90 days yeah it's true uh, a lot of people think you only get 30 days and they just leave the country but that's not the case mm. uh, when you have a tb3 visa you can extend it two times for a total of 90 days there used to be be a cool little booklet uh, about stuff to do in Laos maybe 15 years ago and it was called stay another day mm -hmm. uh, so if you like Laos like a lot of people do and and you feel like 30 days is not enough uh, well you're welcome to stay longer in Laos and extend your visa up to 90 days it's not a problem it's very easy to do um, you can contact CK travel if you need help um, extending a visa for 30 days or um, just go on uh, uh, in the in the comments yep. uh, you can ask you will get some answers there or you can go on Facebook uh, places like expat Laos or uh, expat Luang Pabang uh, or Bien Sien Social, Paxi Social etc uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people here use uh, Facebook and you can get some uh, uh, quality information that it's not always quality but you but there's always somebody who's got who's helpful and who will give you uh, some information if there's a lot of likes uh, it means the information is usually pretty accurate right all the people that have lived here a long time they're super willing to help you extend your stay here and figure things out definitely That's right. check it out online but if you are looking to get a visa Chris is your man for sure, that's why that's why we're here. I, I contacted him myself. Yeah. Was super prompt in his, his response. And another thing I appreciated is you outlined exactly what I needed to do. One, two, three. Yeah. And as soon as I gave you what you needed from me, you did your part, and that's you know all I well, can ask for. That's very important. It's very important to communicate properly, and uh, so we have texts that we've worked over the years to explain uh, you know what type of visas we do, what are the steps to get the visas, and the costs. Uh, so what my company does is multiple entry visas for people staying long term. So what is long term? Long term is three, six or 12 month visas. And we basically, we do all the application for you. Uh, we don't issue the visas, the authorities issue the visas. And a visa in Laos is uh, usually uh, three things. It's a multiple entry visa. So you can go out and into Laos as many times as you want. It's also a stay permit which gives you a temporary residency uh, in uh, Lao PDR for six or 12 months. And we also have, we also assist with investor visas for people who opened a, or started a company here in Laos. And uh, so the investor visa is called NIB2. Uh, the spouse visa, if you're married to a Lao national, is called SPB3, SP is in spouse. And the LAB2 is, uh, it's called, it's, it's the labor visa but you don't actually have to work it's known as the labor visa so you can get a multiple entry visa with state permit and work permit if you're working um, and if you're not working you can get the same uh, visa which is a multiple entry visa with a state permit so no work permit needed if you're not working for a Lao company or generating income here and um, if you're over 65 years old uh, there's a retirement visa which is same thing in the LAB2 with a state permit, which is cheaper. And now we also have the digital nomad visa, which is the labor visa without a work permit. Uh, and that's now available for all ages. Really? So yeah. This yeah. is the first time I'm hearing about this. this yeah. is amazing. I yeah, was yeah, wondering yeah, about yeah. a digital nomad Yeah, visa. so if you're a digital nomad and, and you like Laos, uh, you can come work here from your computer. And there's a visa for you guys uh, multiple entry with a state permit you're not allowed to physically work for a hotel or restaurant for for a Lao company but if you're working for a foreign company uh, online that's perfectly fine and it's a little bit cheaper uh, it's under $500 a year just to give you an, an idea uh, on the cost of a one-year visa and so for the rest of those visas are they around that same price the around five six hundred bucks or yeah yeah it's between four and six hundred dollars it's 600 a little bucks. bit more expensive when you're um, when you get a work permit because uh, there's an extra booklet uh, that's issued by the Ministry of Labor and uh, you have to they issue an invoice against the um, uh, work permit um, we can also uh, sponsor uh, consultants for example 
So the work permit is only issued for one company. So if you're a consult a consultant, you're gonna work for like five or 10 or two companies, whatever. So what we do in that case is that we as a company sponsor your work permit mm -hmm. and then you can work as a, as a consultant okay. with NGOs or, or companies uh, and they usually deduct uh, a certain amount for taxes. Sure. Uh, it's usually five or 10% not more. And that, in, it, that gives you the freedom to live in Laos and work for, for several Lao clients, which, right. which can be NGOs or companies operating in Laos. Mm -hmm. So you really need a work permit if you're going to be working that way. And then they deal with uh, taxes and it's called a sponsored visa. It's just a little bit more expensive, but it's, it's just under $600 uh, for one year. Awesome. So as far as extending this kind of visa, is that an option or you need to get a whole new visa? So, okay, so the the first year, uh, there's a extra process. There's a letter that's issued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm. and you need to cross the border with that letter to activate your visa the first year, your first visa. But then you can extend this visa for six or 12 months. Usually it's every year and there's no letter, you don't have to cross the border or anything like that. You just give us your passport. Uh, we we process the application uh, and uh, uh, immigration issues, the multiple, the new one year multiple entry visa, the state permit, the eventual uh, work permit. And just so you know, uh, my company, all visas are paid after they are processed and you're happy and you actually see the visa. Uh, we send you pictures and you can check everything and you pay after uh, the visa is processed and we're the only company who does that. That's huge, that's huge, yeah. Well, it's important because there's been so many stories of people who gave money to some guy who says he can do the visa and then the guy disappears, they met in a parking lot or in a restaurant somewhere <laughs> and uh, that's a problem. <laughs> and, and a lot of, I mean, we deal with a lot of newcomers uh, to Laos. Yeah. Uh, they've heard about us. We have a really, really good reputation. Uh, but still, just, just to make things easier, we front the money to the authorities, so Immigration, Ministry of Public Security for uh, the state permits, and Ministry of Labor for the work permits. And uh, that way, you don't take that risk, and you see that we actually processed your visa, and then you just pay it, we give you your passport, and everybody's happy. We just want to make sure that you're satisfied with the result before uh, you pay for your visa. We think that's fair. Uh, we do a lot of visas, we process almost 6,000 visas a year. So at any point of time, we have hundreds of visas um, uh, in process. And we've been in this business for uh, myself 12 years and my partner uh, 17 years. And so, uh, so we're capable of advancing all that cash uh, to the authorities. But uh, we think it's important to uh, give that kind of service. Uh, especially to new people who come to Laos. Definitely. I think this is going to come as a surprise to a lot of people because uh, a lot of people, I think, have thought that Laos is really difficult to come to retire or the digital nomad. I mean, I don't think anybody knew about the digital nomad visa because Laos is a little, relatively unknown. But It's very recent. That's why people don't know about it. Also, a lot of people want to live in Thailand, so I think... Uh, my thought process on the Lao visas was uh, kind of based off of a question from a viewer as well. He said, why wouldn't somebody just get a, a visa in Lao instead of deal with the difficult visas in Thailand? It seems like it could be a, a good option for somebody that wants to stay over here with La Lao and Thailand being so similar, Lao being much more developed than it was previously, so very, very much livable. And then you don't have to try to get this elusive long-term visa in Thailand or deal with all those border crossings. Yeah, yeah it's true. Um, so for people who know about Thailand, you have something called a TM30 or 90, I think. You have to report to immigration every 90 days. Um, visas are much more expensive, especially if you need a work permit in, uh, in Thailand. Um, if you're retired, it's fine. Uh, the retirement age in Thailand is 50 years old, but you need to have money. Uh, so you need to have a minimum income. It's around two thousand dollars a month, which is not everybody has that every month. Or it's I think eight hundred thousand baht, 
which is about 20 something thousand dollars on a bank account for at least six months not everybody has that either so we don't have these uh these restriction restrictions here uh there is usually an interview i mean over the phone it's it's, it's very straightforward and uh, if you're from a western country just welcome to laos you can get a multiple entry visa or a tourist visa uh, you're more than welcome the only thing that we ask is that you respect the culture that you try to learn the language if you're going to be here long long term and that basically you're you're welcome but you're also invited into a country which is not yours and that you respect uh, the rules the laws and stuff like that uh, just be a decent person and you'll be perfectly fine uh, you're more than welcome in, in to laos uh, uh, it's a great place to be right uh, I have, actually i'm glad you touched on that because i was wondering if there are any pitfalls or particular things that foreigners run into when they're trying to get visas that we could help them out with maybe they can avoid those well first of all laos is not for everybody it's it's a place where the culture is different the language is different people don't act in the same way um, so it, it, it takes a lot of learning motivation uh, love for the country compassion thing like that um, so um, what I usually tell people is okay if you like Laos uh, you come and it's love at first sight as it is uh, it was for me and it, it's been for other people but not for everybody um, if you really want to spend time here just spend spend a year first um, I mean there's only three seasons here it can get very hot some people don't like the heat it can rain a lot for four months during the summer some people don't like the rain um, some people uh, like their Western way of, of thinking and which doesn't really work here it takes you have to learn to think uh, differently so I just tell people you know welcome to Laos spend a year don't get married don't invest <laughs> don't buy a house or land or anything. don't don't make any big decisions yeah. uh, the first year just uh, enjoy the country go out meet expats meet Lao people try to figure out as much as you can both culture wise but also learn the language as much as you can a lot of people love it when 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 you know a little bit of Lao it's not that difficult to learn just a few phrases and, and and to show that you're you're trying to to adapt to the local uh, culture and language and after one year then you can sit down and think about uh, what you want to do because the way you'll think after a year is completely different from the way uh, you think when you just arrived here uh, it's it, it's very different it's not the same thing it tends to rub off on you a bit here <laughs> if you allow it to if you allow it to. Yeah. but and i it, think it should you should and, there's a lot of yeah. positives that, that we there's can there's a lot of positives uh but there there may be negatives uh and like i said it's not for everybody some people just don't like it and uh, uh okay if you if it doesn't work out then uh, you know you go back home or you try another country um but it's not uh, I mean, Laos is the jungle. <laughs> uh, we're here, uh, you know, uh, I bought some land, but I had to put water, electricity, uh, and make the place livable. And uh, and if you don't speak the language and, and you don't know the place, you don't know where to buy your stuff, you don't know how it works, you don't know what's the equipment that you should buy, which the equipment that you shouldn't buy. Uh, uh, so it, it takes a while to to figure all that stuff out. But the Lao people do make it really easy on you if you put your effort into learning their culture and language, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they're they're always welcoming. 